Welcome home. I'm so glad you decided to join us today for Church at Home, and I would love to extend a special welcome to anyone new to the family. Today we are going to be talking about how Jesus is our mighty God. And if you have any questions, want to get involved, or just let us know that you are here, please text Hello Core to 474747 and we will get in touch with you. And if this is helpful to you, please consider clicking the like, subscribe buttons, and ring the bell for notifications. We are a church that seeks to transform lives with the resurrected power of Jesus, and there are a lot of great things happening, but we'll come back to them at the end. Right now, let's gather together for a time of praise and worship. welcome you to our house for Church at Home. My name is Anna and I'm one of the leaders here at Church at Home. I'm so excited that you're joining us today for the second week of Advent. 
I don't know if you have your Christmas decorations up or if they went up right after Halloween. Our family waits to put them up the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And it was hard to wait this year, but we're enjoying them now. I love to sit in the glow of the lights and just breathe. Our hope is that this next 30 minutes will provide you a place of peace and comfort. Set down the things that beep, chirp, or buzz at you. Take a deep breath and release the stress and craziness you've been holding in. Gather friends or family around you or contact someone over the phone and watch with them. Let the words, music, and prayers encourage and strengthen your whole soul as we have church at home together. We begin with the words that Jesus said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Many Christian services have a time for reciting a creed. A creed is a compilation of the beliefs of a group. As Christians, one of our creeds is called the Apostles' Creed. Please join me in saying this statement of belief. I, I believe, believe in God, God the, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us, especially if this is your first time. Shoot us a text to 474747 with the word Hello Core, one word, to let us know that you're here. When you do that, a form will come to you with a place for you to ask questions. If there are any words you don't understand, any questions about the ideas you hear, please write them and send them to us. We would love to find a time to talk more deeply about what you hear. Now we're continuing our series on the names of Jesus that leads us to Christmas. We're going to listen to Pastor Stephen talk about Jesus as our mighty God. Listen in with me. Well, Stephen, welcome back. We're so glad to have you for Church at Home as we enter into the Advent season. Mm -hmm. And I'm reminded of a great, wonderful, just a beautiful piece of music by Handel mm -hmm. um, that says, comfort, comfort you, my people. And then mm -hmm. it goes on to talk about who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Thou is the uh, wonderful counselor, mm -hmm. the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and then the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about the everlasting, uh, the wonderful counselor mm -hmm. last week, yeah, and, yeah, right. and you're coming to talk about how Jesus is the mighty God. He is. And so uh, yeah. where are we going to go for that? We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 65, verses uh -huh. 17 through 25. Awesome. And like you said, we looked at wonderful counselor last week, and this week we will be looking at mighty God. When you think of mighty, I think of a big oak tree, a strong oak tree, and we're going to see how, in fact, Jesus is the mighty God in a little bit different way than we might expect. Isaiah 65 is a picture of the new heavens mm -hmm. and the new earth. Uh, we'll see how things in this broken place or sometimes broken place are restored ultimately. It's a picture of, of the future for those who uh, know Christ, and it's a picture of hope. And it's a picture of harmony as well. So that's what we're going to look, look at. Uh, we'll look at the mighty God, how he restores hope and harmony to a painful and confusing life. Yeah, I love it. So if you could uh, start us off, it would be great to hear verses 17 through 20. All right. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. Mm. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. For I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner... A hundred years old shall be our curse. Mm, mm. Thanks, Greg. So this is uh, 
The thing I love about Isaiah, the thing I love about the Bible is it, it gives these great metaphors yeah. for life, metaphors for uh, what things will look like in the future, and it helps me to think and, and to kind of experience those in my mind. And so as we look at, at hope, he starts off, Isaiah starts off in verse 17, giving us a picture, picture of uh, a good kind of amnesia, where the things of our life, if we kind of look around our shoulder and look at all the painful things, the places where we were wounded, the brokenness, uh, the, the things of this life that, that hurt, uh, then those will be restored. Mm. We will forget those. So there's a, there's a sense of, I mean, I know I look at my own life and I think, man, I wish I could forget that or if I could forget that. And, and it really does hurt. It brings a sense of shame. It brings sometimes a sense of guilt. It, it, it shapes how we interact with others as well. And so uh, it's great to read a passage where, no, Jesus coming, this Christ child and this one who will return again coming, uh, will restore all things and make them right. And he continues, and he speaks of a new Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Now, he's not so much talking about a particular place as he is talking about that there will be a new community of people. There will be this new place where, um, in a sense, it'll be a utopia, maybe. Uh, it'll be a place where uh, there is always hope, where there is always uh, a sense of uh, the painful things being gone and that we see described in the next couple verses where it, it uses the metaphor of the loss of a child. And as we know as pastors, that is, that is devastating. Yeah. And I'm sure if you're watching, there's things that you've experienced that are devastating. And what verse 19, I mean, excuse me, what verse 20 is pointing us to is that there will be a day when those things are no more. And uh, that, that points us into the fact that we're going to have a, uh, not only a hope, but also there will be harmony yeah. restored. There will be harmony restored in relationships as well. I'm sure that no one out there or you or me, you know, we've never, all of our relationships are perfect all the time. <laughs> but uh, there, there is a sense where uh, all of that, all of those painful things in relationships will be mm-hmm. restored. So would you mind reading, uh, just finish it off 20 through 25? Sure. They shall build houses and inhabit them. Mm-hmm. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall be the days of my people. And my chosen shall be long, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Mm-hmm. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord mm. and their descendants with them. So there is, you know, there's a picture of what things are going to look like, where mm. these relationships will be restored, where they're, you know, the metaphor is owning, a, building a house and someone else inhabiting it or, or growing food and someone else eating it. And it's pointing us to the fact that in a, in a broken world, there are things that we expect. There are things that we, um, in a sense, want to happen without any harm happening to them. And that's just not the case. I mean, you can turn on your local news channel and see that that's That's not the case. But in this restoration, in this new heavens, in this new earth, there will be uh, this blessed experience with the Lord. He says, before they call, I will answer. While they are speaking, I will hear. And what Jesus is saying is, I know you. Mm. I know you and I will know you. And there will be... uh, you, you. you don't have to worry about your future. And it's not this don't worry, be happy. It's like cling to me because this hope will happen. And if you could read verses 24 through 25, that would be great. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. For the wolf and the lamb shall graze together. Mm. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. And dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Well, you know, the the picture of harmony gets even 
uh, even bigger. Yeah. And where we see a picture of a wolf and the lamb grazing together. Now, this metaphor is reminding us of the brokenness, not the fact that it's broken because a wolf wants to uh, eat a eat a lamb. I mean, that's kind of natural, right? Yeah. For if you're a wolf, <laughs> but what it does point us to is the ridiculousness of grace, yeah. the ridiculousness of restoration. Mm -hmm. That it is going to be so wonderful that the lie, the wolf and the lamb will graze together. Yeah. Now, I don't know if when we get to heaven we'll see wolves and lambs grazing together, but maybe, but what it is pointing to is the beauty of restoration, that the unimaginable will be imaginable. And that's what we have a hope in, is that the unimaginable will be imaginable. And the reason that the unimaginable will be imaginable is because uh, the mighty God, the one who does the re restoring, did the unimaginable. Mm -hmm. The one who could have called down angels, who could have uh, clean the place out because of our sin, because of our own, our brokenness, because of our rebellion. Instead, went to the cross. I mean, he died on the cross so that we could find forgiveness of our sins, so that we could have a relationship with him. Now, instead of separation, for those who have faith in Christ, there's union. And that although it's not a perfect world as we see described here, as will happen when Jesus returns, mm -hmm that this very restoration now lives in us. It lives in those who know Christ. So uh, there's this beautiful picture in one of the... If you don't have this devotion, I would encourage you to get it. And I asked Greg before this if he could just read one little piece of it from uh, one of C.S. Lewis's books in the Chronicle of Narnia that he quotes in one of these devotions that gives a great picture of the future to come and a great description yeah. of it. It's actually one of my favorite stories in all of the Chronicles of Narnia, mm -hmm. as it has a, a picture of Father Christmas mm -hmm. that is so different from what we mm -hmm. typically experience. Mm -hmm. C.S. Lewis reminds us that we see Father Christmas as this kind of elf-like, jolly, weird guy who apparently hangs out in malls. <laughs> um, but but what happens in Narnia is mm -hmm. that it's always winter and never Christmas. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's a lot of what you're talking about, this, this stuckness. But we know that Christmas is right around the corner, but we just can't get there. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a miracle for us to get there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in the meantime, we sit here in this kind of weird place of, of crying out to the Lord yeah. for something to happen. And at the end of kind of reflecting on that passage... It says, sometimes the harsh frosts of this life, cancer, divorce, bankruptcy, trauma, grief, depression, cause our hearts to freeze. It seems like it's always winter and never Christmas. But take heart. Aslan is on the move. God will use his might to set things right. Mm. Friends, that's the good news. And if you are feeling like in your heart it's always winter and never Christmas, that you can't round the corner, the Lord makes it very clear in Scripture that if you cry out to Him, you will be saved. Those who call on His name will be saved. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're hearing this and you've been waiting to just have someone say, what can I do? He doesn't require a test. He doesn't say, do this, this, and this. He just says, cry out to me. Put all of your weight on me and I will carry you. And friends, this is the mighty God who restores hope and harmony in the pain and confusion of this life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stephen, for reminding us that Jesus is our mighty God. He came as a tender baby, but will come a second time as our mighty God and King. If this idea has touched your heart and you have questions about this mighty God, please use the feedback form to reach out and we will contact you to talk further. As Christians, we have a God who hears and forgives. We like to take time in our service to examine our hearts and confess to Him. I wonder, are there times when your heart has been restless this week? Times when you haven't gone to God, but to other people, things or substances to meet your needs? Times where you haven't trusted God's mighty power to meet you and to meet your needs? If there have been moments like that, and let's be honest, all of us have moments like that, <laughs> Take a few moments to reflect on those weeks, those things in the week, and let's confess them to God.
let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged our likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your Son. Remake us and lead us by your Spirit, the Comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth, remove your sins from you. As far as the east is from the west, strengthen your life in his kingdom and keep you upright to the last day through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. I want you to know that God loves you and meets you no matter how far away you feel to, from him today with words of welcome. Listen to these welcoming words of Jesus to all who turn to him. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. These words remind us of the truth that Jesus is our mighty God. He is strong in his care to rescue and deliver us. And as a result of that care, we then can care for each other. So we say to each other, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As we say the word peace, we realize that the world is greatly lacking in peace right now. We hear of bad news everywhere and our hearts are heavy until we remember that we have a mighty God. We can turn to him with all our needs and all our wants and he both hears and answers our prayers. Join me in praying to this God with me. We pray that you will lead the nations of this world in the ways of peace. Guide their leaders in wisdom and truth for the safety and good of all. God, we do pray for the nations of the world. We pray for the countries that are in lockdown or going into lockdown as a result of COVID. We pray for the people that are scared, for the leaders that are unsure of what to do. We pray that you would give great wisdom to the leaders of the world, that you would protect all those who are working to bring health and safety, and that you would um, help your love be seen throughout the Christians in the world. Together, Father, Father hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Pour out on your whole church the spirit of unity and truth. May all who confess your holy name agree in the truth of your word, live in loving unity, and serve you with holy and righteous lives. Lord, I pray for the church throughout the world, that you would provide leaders who can care and guide it, into um, a way of loving for the world around each and every one of our churches. Lord, I pray for our bishops and our archbishops and all those um, pastors and all of those lay leaders, that you would pour out your spirit upon them, that you would guide them, and that you would guide them specifically to people who aren't yet part of the church, and they, they would be part of a great harvest. Together, Father, Father hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, comfort and sustain everyone who in this fleeting life is in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other distress. Add your prayers right now for people that you're concerned about. Together, Father, Father hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer through, through Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. And we pray as our Savior Christ taught us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Jesus is Christ.
same Let every nation shout of your fame Jesus is coming soon Like a bride waiting for her groom Will be a church ready for you Every heart longing for our King We sing, even so come Lord Jesus justice, all will be new, your name forever, faithful and true, Jesus is coming soon, like a bride waiting for her groom, when he church ready for you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I mentioned earlier that we are a community that seeks to transform lives with the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. And as we close, I would like to share a few ways to connect into our family. If you are interested in connecting with us in any of these ways or learning more, please text HELLO CORE to 474747 and we will connect with you. Our core groups are continuing to grow and reach many different people in different ways. These groups really try to dive deep together, and we would love to find the right group for you. This week, we have our drive through Nativity, and if you have the day off or are in town, we would love to see you there. I know that this season can be challenging, whether you've lost a loved one or are just feeling down, and so we have a blue Christmas service on Thursday the 17th at 6 p.m., and I would invite you to come and rest in God's love for you. Thank you so much for taking this time to join us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week.